PowerShell is a very strong command line interface and automation engine. It has more horsepower than the very well-known command prompt. PowerShell is ideal for administrators who want to run complex operations over huge networks. So rather than collating information about hundreds of different servers and services, of course, manually, you can simply uh, write up a script on PowerShell to automatically feed the information back to you. So talking about SIM, which is the Security Incident and Events Management System, the main feature is actually for each SIM is the logs collection or aggregation from different log sources such as servers, network devices, etc. Then after you collect these logs, you have to normalize them into a type that is understood by the engine then correlation between these logs take place which is actually making sense of a series of events that happened you can actually do the same thing using powershell we will not here create a very complex sim like these very well known gartner quadrant uh, uh, vendors like i don't know q radar splunk uh, logarithm rsa alien vault but here uh, I want to show you the basics of creating such a system. You can collect logs from different servers over your network, look up for certain event IDs and a certain log type such as application security or system. And then you can populate the database with these events. And then you can create your own set of rules and triggers to analyze such logs so on and so forth, thus replicating the very basic features of a SIM solution. So let's begin here. In order to start PowerShell Windows 10, you need to be an administrator. So log in as administrator, go to start here and search for PowerShell. Right click on this PowerShell app and run it as administrator. The first thing that you need to do is to set the execution policy you can set the execution policy by doing by executing this command so first let's get get dash execution policy oops uh, get execution policy so here you'll see that the execution policy is remote signed. Actually, we have four types of execution policies. It's either restricted. Restricted means it's the default execution policy. It locks the PowerShell down so that any command can be entered, uh, will not be allowed to run. The other uh, type of uh, policy is all signed. It means that scripts will be allowed to run, but only if they are signed by a trusted publisher so all signed is needs to be signed by a trusted publisher remote signed as you can see here on my screen any powershell script that has been locally created will be allowed to run so scripts created remotely are allowed to run only if they are signed by a trusted publisher and the unrestricted mode as the name implies it removes all the restrictions from the execution policy so here if you want to set my execution policy I just go right set execution so you can press on tab to get the command easier and un unrestricted you say yes And here you go, you can go again to get the execution policy and now it's unrestricted. One of the basic commands uh, is to get the event log. So you can issue get dash event log space dash list. So this command will actually get all the event logs here in the system. One of the most common reasons user look at event logs is of course to see error. So if you want to see error event in your log, simply type that. So go to get event log dash 
you can specify the log name for example I want to get it from the system which is here this is the system log and then I want all the error entry type in the system logs to appear so you can specify the entry type to be error here you will see all the errors in your system log let's skip that now if you want to get event logs from multiple sources or multiple computers in this case you need to specify which device you want to view um, the uh, logs from so let's go again here get event log specifying the event name which is system we need to change that a bit and then here you can specify computer name you can call it so all the computers that are accessed uh, by your subnet that you're working on you can name them here so computer name uh, whatever XYZ this is the first source you can add another source here this is computer name you can add server here so you can access all the computers logs using this command win 10 and I'll initiate and I'll open another VM on the network DC domain controller so using this command you'll be able to get all the system logs from the Windows 10 machine and the domain controller you can put as many sources as you want just press enter as you can see we're populating all the system logs from these two machines now sometimes you need to do more uh, you need to include some parameters in your search a couple of parameters you can use uh, with the event log command you can specify dates so after a certain date before a certain date as we saw here you can specify a computer name a source you can as well specify the entry type such as error uh, in case you're using security logs you can uh, get the failed audit success audit information warning uh, the list command will list all the logs of course and you can as well search by username which specifies some events associated with a, with a certain username now let's stop this command and try another one here We'll try to make it a bit complex. So, using the get event log, I want to get the log name of application and the entry type in the application needs to be error. So, I'm searching all the error in the application log from the sources which is defined by computer name just type press tab for uh, to make it easier for you the computer name is DC this is the remote computer and you can as well here add as many sources as you want just open a quotation write the name close the quotation open the quotation write the name and then close the quotation so uh, for the sake of easiness here I'll just uh, put one source now you want the logs after a certain day so you use the parameter of after and then use the command of get date so you'll get the current date dot add hours so if you want to get the logs since one hour so you need to add 
minus one hour fine so this is the default command here you get the current timestamp and then you pivot from this time now we need to select from this query select object machine name event ID and entry type and message and export all of this information export to CSV and now we'll provide the path under C VMs then uh, I'll call it my sim dot C S V. Now, if you open the mysim.csv file, you will be able to see this data set, the machine name, event ID, entry type, and message that we have selected. These are the application logs under the entry type error. You can leverage Excel features such as sorting, pivot table, etc. And you can write your own macros if uh, need be to do further analysis on this file. Now let's look deeper. I have uh, an example file here, sim.ps1. Of course, all the extension of PowerShell ends with PS1. Just open that and uh, this is an automated, it's more like it's an advanced version of what we've did with what we've done before. But here we are using the get win event. So the good news is that get win event does allow retrieving events from applications and services. On the contrary, the get event log only allows the retrieval of the typical application system and security logs. So using the get win event, you'll be able to aggregate more sources for your uh, for your logs collection. Besides accessing application and events log, uh, the big advantage of get win event is performance, and especially when retrieving logs from remote computers. It has a simple filter that is called filter hashable that we're using here. An important property of PowerShell variable is its name, which is always preceded by a dollar sign. So here we're declaring this variable, it's preceded by a dollar sign. We have DC and Windows 10. These are the two sources. Variables are case insensitive. So like any other scripting language, PowerShell supports array data type. So this is the way we're declaring an array, uh, dollar search fields, and you uh, declare an at, open parentheses, and you declare the array inside of that. So this actually is our search criteria in the data set of the logs. Again, you can create an empty array using this declaration here. And if you want to use combined assignment operators, you can, you can use that here, all event plus equal, uh, get event and applying the filter. It says as if you're saying that all events equal all events plus this uh, command here. So it's the basics of programming. In this scenario, we want to search for a specific event ID on many different servers. So we'll be able to easily see that the events were happening on multiple servers at the same time. Here, our criteria is searching for event ID number 12 in the system command. So how to run the script in PowerShell? It's the script is essentially as I said, a text file with a PS1 extension. If you want to create a new script, just copy that, paste it in a notepad, and save it as PS1. Now, to run the script, simply you can just double click on that, or you can run PowerShell here. run it as an administrator, take the file, and just press enter. 
if you open sim.csv file you will see the matching results again event id number 12 under the system logs again you can use or you can leverage excel to do more and further analysis